beginning of our story of weathering. Weathering takes apart bedrock and makes it into sediments. And what you have here is bedrock that's exposed and sediment removed. So a lot of parts of town, like where the high school is, it has several hundred feet of sediment. But here it's been stripped clean of the bedrock. As the bedrock breaks down, it makes sediments from boulders to cobbles to um, sand and silt and finally clay, smallest types of sediment pieces as the rock comes apart. So what makes the rock come apart? Um, features of weather, freezing and thawing, breaks apart rock by ice wedging it apart. Also the tree's roots um, get into little cracks and break the rock apart, mechanically break it down. They also chemically break it down by adding a little bit of acid from their roots. And the decay of, of plants and leaves and things slowly puts a little bit of acid. Oxidizing with the atmosphere, uh, the chemical change in the rock makes it softer and more easily broken into sediments. So here we are in the Ivy Hill Cemetery um, looking at the process of weathering. So looking at the same rock type, um, we have marble here. And this was a tombstone that was put here probably in 2004, judging by the information on it. So, you know, 16 years ago. But it's, it's um, made of calcium carbonate um, derived material in this uh, marble. So it's losing some of its sharpness, right, over those 16 years. On the other hand, if you look at a granite tombstone from about the same time, you know, this one's 30 years old, the edges are sharp and it's shiny. So people tend to use um, granite now. They've got better ways of, of uh, chipping stone. It's harder to make a uh, tombstone out of granite. Now they do that quite a bit. Like most of the stones here are granite stones. But there's a few um, beautiful marble ones. So here's one delicately carved little uh, pineapple on top or something um, from 2015. Pretty young stuff. So this is probably a you know, five-year-old uh, tombstone carving. Anyway, quite a bit of detail remains here um, compared to what this might look like in a hundred years. Um, but it's really easy to carve and makes really nice uh, shapes. This is a weathering of rock, which we know the age of. When I see a weathered piece of rock elsewhere in town, I don't know how old it is, but uh, here this this natural rock tombstones uh, weather in the same way, but we have actual time dates on them. So sort of figure out how fast things are moving in terms of breaking down this rock. Here's one I can just make out at 1877. So that's a pretty old tombstone. So you can see again that the edges have been rounded out by weathering. So what has become of this um, piece of uh, marble? It has you know, lost material. So material come off of it, eroded away. Um, by first being weathered by chemically change, right? Um, so the calcium carbonate can become ions and carbon dioxide gas, and basically you leave the scene, but you might be left with small bits of uh, clays and sands and things that were in the stone, which would then accumulate on the ground nearby. So even though this is a you know, human cut stone, it's natural stone and weathers in the same way. So you can see these um, set, which seem to be from about the 1870s. I think I got another one that said 1870. But pretty uh, well impacted by weathering. Okay. This is 1871. Some of the older stones here in the cemetery, I think. Uh, over here at Manassas National Battlefield in Manassas, Virginia. I'm here to see some geological features, um, one of which is uh, this great uh, place to see diabase, which is a igneous rock that's produced deep underground from a mafic. And it's right here in big round boulders. It's kind of weird. Why are they round? So these are exposed here in Manassas 
which is part of the Culpeper Basin. Okay. On the outside, look kind of brown because they've got a little bit of iron in them, and as the rain hits it, kind of leaches it out. Okay. And you can see sort of you know light colors on the outside. Well, I say it's mathic, and you can see a broken piece, and the broken piece shows a dark uh, crystalline rock with millimeter-sized mineral fragments in it. And that tells you it's a mafic rock. The outside being reds and light browns and stuff is from weathering. It's a rock that's been heavily weathered. When it got rolled into this position, it broke a little bit, and so you can see some you know, fresh surface on it that's not as weathered. Now, the interesting thing about these boulders is they've been weathered in a way that makes them round. People see a round rock and think it's been rolled by some sort of erosion process, but this one actually sort of peels like an onion, and the pieces peel off because water seeps into cracks and then freezes and thaws and, and chips off a piece. Unusual thing for a boulder to, to make round splits like this, you'd think. Well, what has happened to this stuff? It was formed so deep underground, when it came to the surface, it expanded. Right, so it got pushed up and it expanded, and as it did that, it kind of puffed up, almost like popcorn expands. And uh, so now, when water gets into it, it um, cleaves off pieces and round exfoliation, they call this. So it's like it's, it's peeling off skin, kind of like uh, peeling an onion, something like that. Anyway, so you end up with round boulders, typically, of diabase that's been weathered.